welcome back to Boots and Bounty Homestead. Welcome for you new viewers and welcome back for all my old friends. So today I am doing a video for a collaboration that I was asked to do and join be a part of by Lee Ann at the Mennonite Farmhouse. So she is putting on this open collaboration and if anyone would like to join, all you need to do is make a video such as this one and tag her down below. You can put in the title, the same title that I have, and it will tag her if you type it out exactly the way it is below um, in the title description. So let's get started. What are we talking about? This is a collaboration to give a ton of ideas and information and support to you guys. So what are we talking about? We are talking about what we love to can and what we are not canning again. Everybody's opinions and choices and decisions are all their own because I may do something that I don't like to can and someone else, it may be their favorite. So this is a collaboration to see all kinds of coming out of the woodwork ideas to share with you some of our tips and pointers and inspirations on recipes that we have canned. So I'm gonna start off Go ahead and get the bad ones out of the way. My first, very first, and just about my one and only up until last year, thing that I will never can again, and that is dun, 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 squash. I do not like to can squash. I do not like to can any kind of squash family um, unless it's a winter squash. Now, I don't like yellow squash and zucchini squash being canned. Because you have to pressure can them, they pretty much turn to mush. Now, if any of you guys have ever done this before and it came out successful, please let me know what you did. I followed the ball book recipe and needless to say, all my jars got cleaned out because I dumped them all out. I could not sit there and waste my jars with having some mushy squash sitting in them. So, we cleaned those out. And the next thing I came up with that I do not like to can, and I think it was more of a variety <clears throat> than it was the actual item itself. Okra. <laughs> it is a big controversial thing to can, not to can it, to freeze, not to freeze it, eat it fresh, preserve it. Um, some people say it's too slimy, some people not, all that good stuff. I, I don't like the sliminess. But when I use okra, it's either fried or it's in my okay skillet dish. And I like to just cut it up, throw it in a freezer bag, and put some cornmeal in it and just keep it covered until I'm ready to use it in the freezer. Now when I canned um, my okra, but let me show you what happened. These are both, because I've only ever grown one variety and my cousin also grows the same variety, but I was thinking that last year, <clears throat> no, year before last, I grew a different variety, but I don't think I canned it because it didn't produce enough to can any excess because we didn't have any excess because we ate it all. <laughs> so, now one of these jars is three years old and one of them is two years old. One is mine, one came from my cousin's field. They are both the same variety. Now that I'm looking at them, they are both the same variety. And let me show you what happened. This is my cousin's. And this is the Clemson Spineless. And I just pressure, can pressure canned it according to the ball recipe book. Let me show you mine. This is mine. It looks really good. Clemson Spineless again. And... Here they are side by side, if you couldn't tell a difference. Now, this one looks like it was canned in muddy water. This one is clear. Same variety, okra. Two different years, two different places, two different people growing them. But, now you see why I'm hesitant <laughs> on canning anymore. Um... Now, the okra that I did can this way, just cutting it up, um, this one is a little mushy. This one I can fry very easily. It is pretty soft, but 
it is it's friable <laughs> okay it's friable now okay okra aside i have one other thing that i wouldn't say i wouldn't can again but again it all pertains to variety i think it's funny how i see people's corn <laughs> that's canned and it's so pretty and bright yellow and it looks like it came from the store okay and then when i look at mine i wonder what i did wrong <laughs> but that's not the reason that i'm iffy about canning this again okay the one i'm just to show you is two years old it's made from the same family member that i got the okra from from this one and he always grew corn that was uh, peaches and cream. And then he did the sweet queen, silver queen or something like that. He did that one one year. I'm not exactly sure what variety this one is. I believe this one is a new variety. And it's, it's like simply good or it's, I can't remember that it's, it's a real simple name to it, like, like, tastes great or simply good or, you know, something like that. I can't think of the name of it. But anyways, I canned this one in quartz, and it did good. And I wish I had one of the previous years. But this is what my corn looks like. And they all kind of discolor on top, and that's normal. And it's kind of got like an amber color to it. And that's fine. I'm, this is the corn I grew up on. My mommy usually cuts it off and freezes it. No problem whatsoever. Um, and I'm not saying this is bad. Because we will eat this corn. Because like I said, this was either the Silver Queens or the new kind that he tried. And I'm so sorry that I don't remember the varieties. Um, but anyways, what I'm getting to is that the first time I ever canned corn, it was using the peaches and cream. When I canned that corn, it ended up having a smoky flavor to it, which was really weird. And the, all of that corn that I canned that year all had this, like a grilled flavor. And that's not what I was going for. Now, we could not eat it plain. Like you can, you know, just regular canned corn. You just dump out, you know, and warm it up or whatever and eat as a side. We could not eat it like that. I had to use it in recipes and in dishes to cover up that smoky flavor because it was not a good smoky flavor. It was like, it wasn't like, I take that back. It wasn't like a grilled smoky flavor. It was more like a burnt grilled smoky flavor. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Um, I am hesitant to can corn. Let's just... Leave it at that. It's not that I absolutely hate it because I still do it. Um, just to have it on the shelves because I can't freeze all that corn that I get. Um, because I have family members that grow it. We have family friends that grow it. And I have people that just bring me stuff. You know, so I've got to have somewhere to put it. So I will still can corn if I have to. Um, but it's not my first choice. <laughs> okay. So, there is my three things. So, we did the squash and the okra is kind of iffy and the corn is kind of iffy. Um, I will if I have to. The squash, never again. But um, the okra and the corn are 50-50. It depends on the variety and what kind of space do I have. Now, on a good note, what are some things that I absolutely love to can? Well... I don't do a whole lot of recipes per se. I like to do individual items. Like you see here, I've got corn, I've got okra. I do tomatoes, I've always um, like sauce and stewed tomatoes, tomato juice. I do individual products. So that way, whenever I cook something that I can just go in there and get what I need and throw it all together. Like I make a lot of soups with a lot of my vegetables and I can just go get a bunch of quart jars and pour them all together and then create my own recipe. 
because if if say you took this corn and you made like I don't know a Mexican street corn kind of recipe if you did something like that like a Mexican style it is what it is whereas I can take this corn put it in anything flavor it any way I want to and it's still corn I take it I dump it out into whatever I'm cooking or whatever I'm flavoring it as I can put it in all kinds of recipes because it's just plain corn that's the way I can but I do have some recipes that I have started using um, just because I had so much of certain items such as tomatoes because they just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming that I had to get creative with how I put them up because if not I'm gonna have a whole pantry full of tomato products that I don't always use like I've got a bunch of tomato juice but I haven't canned tomato juice in two years and I still got probably four quart, 40 quarts in there because it's not something that I use all the time so some of the creative things that I have come up with other than just the single items I do my spaghetti sauce um, now the spaghetti sauce I make a batch of or a lot of batches but I make a batch of spaghetti sauce and then once I'm full of my spaghetti sauces I make the same recipe but I cook it longer to make pizza sauce but it's practically the same thing other than if you want your spaghetti to be a little more spicy in one area and your pizza a little spicier in another area then you can you know change the the recipe up to make what you want but I use the same recipe and put all of my spaghetti sauce up cook it a little bit longer and put it up I label it as spaghetti sauce but when I pick it up and I tilt it sideways if it doesn't move I know that's the pizza sauce one um, but I can also take it out and use it as spaghetti sauce if I want to it'll, it'll just be thicker or I can add a little water to it um, another big recipe that I did this year that everybody loved everybody is wanting again this year I've got to make a ton of it because it's already flying off the shelves people wanting it to, to buy it that recipe is my tomato bacon jam now I know a lot of you are like what the heck is tomato jam to begin with but um, I say it's tomato bacon jam just because that's the way it's labeled but seriously really what it tastes like is bacon flavored ketchup okay I got a recipe and a video down below that we'll put in here maybe I may even put it in the iCard but um, I'll have that video linked where you can go watch it if you would like to put that in your pantry this year another unique item that I have been putting in my pantry this year is the yellow pear tomato sauce has nothing to do with pears it is it's a tomato sauce but it's made with the yellow pear little baby cherry tomatoes and I have a recipe also in that it's a little different for those of you that don't like red sauces you can do this one with the yellow sauce this one is still a tomato based sauce but it's just made with yellow pears because as any of you know that if you have grown yellow pear tomatoes they are very prolific they run wild you've got to have a lot of stuff to do with them <laughs> or you're gonna be making a lot of the same stuff with the yellow pears because they will run out of your ears I'll also either put that in the I card or I will put it in the description below another item that I don't even know what I'm on am I on two or three <laughs> but anyways I'm gonna keep going um, another item that I absolutely love to can is my cabbage soup recipe I also have a video on that this is the first year that I've made it I never was fond on eating a cabbage soup until I made it and then it actually tastes like my vegetable soup that I make it's very good you can do it with or without meat I did mine with meat so it's already ready to go um, as well as I can my own vegetable uh, beef soup that we make as well as a clean out the freezer stew that my parents make and I haven't done a video on the stew but I believe I have one for the soup that I will put below um, and that's made out of you know just going and getting my jars and just dumping them all together and letting them cook and then canning them up 
Now, I like to do those soups and stews and the cabbage soup. Cabbage soup, I think, is my favorite by far now. Um, but having those ready, if we need to just go in there and grab something real quick, the stew and the soup I put in quart jars, and I usually heat up two quart jars at a time. Just throw it all together, warm it up, and it's ready to go. Canned food is the homesteader's fast food, let me tell you. Um, and then the cabbage soup I put in pint jars, so they are single serve. Because the kids won't eat it, and Stephen don't eat a whole lot of it, but he has tried it. Um, I've eaten two or three jars of it in the last couple of months that I have made it. And it is, pop the lid, throw it in a you know, microwave, or if you want to dirty up another pot. You can heat it up on the stove. I just throw mine in the microwave because I eat it out of the jar. And then that way, um, it's just, it's ready to go and it's good to eat. Another good thing that I have fallen in love with this year is not just plain chicken broth, but a strong flavored broth. I do have a video on um, the process of canning broth, but I've changed the process of the way I cook it a little bit. Now, throughout the year, as I cook stuff and as I process stuff and, and all that, and I have leftovers such as, you know, any herbs or any fats, any bones, anything like that, I have a bag in my freezer. It just stays in the freezer all the time. And I just go in there and throw in whatever I have extra that I'm going to use for my bone broth. And whenever I get ready to make bone broth, like if I get a full gallon bag and I'm starting another one, I'll go ahead and empty out that bag and start cooking down the bone broth. Now, I put in the bone broth in my 16-quart pressure canner bottom. I put it, um, I just dump everything in there and then I put, um, it would be four gallons. But once I put everything in there, I think it's three gallons. Um, so I just fill it up with water and then I let it cook for like, three or four days on low. I put it on high, get it going, let it cook down a little bit, and then I turn it down onto like low, medium low, and I just let it sit there covered for like three days. Just go by, stir it occasionally, and if I see the water level getting low, I'll just add some water to it so I keep it on up to the top. And it becomes this amber colored, deep, rich broth. Now, you can freeze it that way. Once you strain it out, you can freeze it or you can can it. And I like to can mine. And I've probably got 30 or 40 quarts of bone broth in there right now. And whenever you look at it, when the sun's shining through it, it is absolutely like a amber brown color. And it is delicious. So that has been one of my favorite items to can this year. As well as, and I won't get into too much detail, some of the different jellies that I make. We don't eat a whole lot of jelly here in the house just because of carbs and um, sugars and stuff like that. We try to restrict a lot of that. But I do make um, kind of those oddball jellies that really nobody thinks about, such as you don't see a lot of blueberry jam or jelly. Um, I do a watermelon rind jam or preserves. Those words are kind of used interchangeably because mine's mine's not really one or the other. It's kind of both meshed together. I make an orange jelly. I make dandelion jelly. I make, I do blackberry jam, but I do take the seeds out of it. And I make a ton of other stuff. Any kind of fruit, it's going to be a sauce. It's going to be a juice. It's going to be a jam. It's going to be a jelly. It will be something. And nothing goes to waste around here. I use all of the rinds and all of the cores for something. Well, guys, I think that is going to wrap it up. I'm sure you are tired of sitting here looking at my beautiful face <laughs> and listening to me talk and ramble on about stuff I have in the pantry that I really enjoy. This year, I'm going to have some new recipes coming about that I am trying a few different things. So stick around with me this summer and we will get all kinds of new recipes put in the pantry as well as some of the old staples that will always be in my pantry. So I hope you guys enjoyed and go check out all of the other channels that are doing this collaboration. See what kind of things that they are talking about, what they come up with and what they have in their pantry. So until next time guys, we'll see you later. Bye!